There it is. Everyone sits still. Archie's on the end of his lens. A magnificent black rhinoceros. How oh, very splendid. He's standing there wondering what on earth all of the fuss is about. There are lots of cars watching him. Lots of delighted people. He's got some ox peckers on him. Ooh, and coming straight towards us is the Eurasian Marsh Harrier. I should just go through the middle of your screen. That was perfectly timed. Well done, you clever bird. Twice as clever cameraman. Very good. Let us go back to the rhinoceros. He must be slowly walking this way. This is the kind of area that poor old Jamie Taylor and, well, obviously not Brent, but Ralph and Steve were getting stuck in a little while back. It gets very inundated and marshy. What a creature. Now, of course, apart from the vastness of the Mara, the other thing that is really good fun is the openness of the Mara. And, you know, in Kruger, for example, if you were standing this close to a black rhinoceros, you'd have about, oh, I don't know, you'd have an enormous, windy, impenetrable forest in front of you that you'd have to get through to get to him, and you'd have no idea that he was there. But there he is. Now, one of the most interesting things about them here in the Mara is, of course, that they are still browsers, they're not grazers, and yet they live in this open area. What they browse on is little bits of or small bushes, and I think it's largely the caper bushes, I think they eat those, that are in amongst the grass, just small sort of, uh, I guess, you might call them saplings. Now, he can smell something. He is irritated by something. I'm saying he, I'm assuming it's a bull, it might not be. See the notches in the ear? Those notches are most probably cut by human beings who have marked him so that they know who he is. And I wonder if it's not that he can smell us. I think it is that he can smell us. Clifford, do you want to know how long the black rhino has been an endangered species? I don't know, Clifford. Um, I can look it up for you. I think I might actually have something that will tell us. Let me look quickly. But I do know that it's as long as I've known about rhino. I remember doing, <laughs> I remember doing a, a a school project of it in what you would call the seventh grade, what we used to call standard five, and. I remember, it was a, I'm laughing because it was horrific, I'm dreadful at art and have no idea really, and the black rhino was then endangered, as far as I remember. I'm just trying to see here if we do perhaps have some kind of answer to that question. No, I don't think we do. I would say at least 20 years, 20 to 30 years. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't be more accurate than that. Remember, different um, subspecies of black rhino are in various different of threat, and one of them is in fact um, one of them is in fact extinct. That's the western black rhino, which was declared extinct. I am checking this on an app. Thank you very much, Archie, for showing everybody that I was checking on my app. He has an amazing poker face, does our Archie. Um, so, yeah, I think I think for at least 30 years, one of them has, in fact, gone extinct, and I think there are seven others still that are around. This one is not in particularly good shape. Right, I don't think any of them are in particularly good shape. Let's just go around the corner here and see if we can't get another view of him. View of the Eurasian Marsh Harrier. There are only supposed to be 16 or so of them in the entire Masai Mara, so, you know, you're not going to see great herds of them. But you may see more than one from time to time. Most likely a cow and her calf. I, I don't know if the young bulls hang around together like they do uh, with white rhino. 
you find they probably do to a certain extent. He's listening to the cars moving and turning his head sort of towards the wind. He knows there's something afoot in this direction, but he's not really sure what it is, because of course his eyes aren't so good. I remember the slogan for my uh, a seventh grade uh, biology project was don't kill rhino, only short-sighted people kill short-sighted animals. Oh, what a cringe. <laughs> I was so desperately original, wasn't I? And the pictures I drew of the rhino, I mean, they really were distressingly poor. Oh, he's a fantastic fellow, this. Now, I don't think he's a very big black rhino. I think that he is probably about... <laughs> he's probably about one tonne or so, a thousand kilograms, 2,200 pounds, plus minus, and jumble. And that is not a huge amount bigger than a really big buffalo bull, which is difficult to believe. Now, uh, we have a question from Kermi, which is very nice. Hello, Kermi. I didn't know you were watching us. I hope your banjo is in hand. Kermi, you're wondering how tall a black rhinoceros is? Well, I can tell you that exactly. I will tell you exactly how tall a black rhinoceros is at the shoulder. If I can find the correct app. I'm going to say around five foot two or so at the shoulder, but I will confirm that for you now. Black rhinoceros. Text. Description. It's the one we want. Don't want to know about its eyelashes. Want to know how tall it is. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure it'll give it to me. They always give these things. Surely it must be here. Yeah. Horn size? No, not interested in that. Males, horn, horn, horn. No, not, oh, yes, there we go. Adult black rhinoceros stands about 1.6 meters at the shoulder. That is almost exactly as I said. So 1.6 meters at the shoulder is roughly 5 feet and 4 for 3 inches. And I'd say that's a pretty good size, that chap. So even I would be able to see over his shoulder. Hello, Lily. You want to know how their horns stay sharp? Lily, that's actually a really good question, and in areas where rhinos and telephone poles occur, it becomes very obvious how they stay sharp, because the telephone poles all develop scrape marks at the bottom of them, because they're straight and easy to sharpen your horn on. Uh, basically, they use trees, they'll sharpen their trees on on sharpen their trees on horns, sharpen their horns on trees, and they'll also use, I suppose they, they horn the ground, but I'm not sure how effective that is at sharpening their horns, but it'll be on trees largely that they keep them that sharp, and I mean that thing looks like it's got a rapier stuck under its nose. Okay, we're going to try for one more angle, and then we're going to get out of this fog. <laughs> Hello Gianna, you are 11 years old and you want to know if there are any other rhinos other than black or white ones, uh, you could like, quite like to see a pink one. Well, uh, Gianna, there are only black and white rhino, but you know, I'll tell you a secret. Well, it's not a secret, it's just um, quite an interesting fact really. Black and white rhinos are actually not black or white. They are both the same colour. They are both that grey colour. And I'll tell you why they're called black and white. And I'll tell you also that I suppose, although I've never seen it myself, it might actually be possible for you to see a pink rhinoceros. Yes, a pink rhinoceros. Right, let's have a look. We'll just go around this corner and then we'll have another look at him and I'll explain all of that to you now. Here's this little corner. There we are. 
I don't think he's going to come out of this sort of bog in there, so I don't think we're going to spend too much longer here. But Gianna, they're called black and white because of a mistranslation. So when the settlers, the Dutch people, arrived in Cape Town in South Africa, it wasn't Cape Town at the time, it was just a sort of bay with very cold water and, and uh, very little rainwater, much as it is now. And... <laughs> And they saw both kinds of rhino down near Cape, near the Cape. They called one the Veit Renoster, which meant the wide-mouthed rhino. And then they called the other one, um, I don't know what they called the other one actually. But when the English settlers then arrived, they didn't bother in time-honoured tradition to find out what Veit actually meant. And so they assumed it meant white, and they called the other one black. So they're actually exactly the same colour, and the vate referred to the fact that this one, well, this black rhino has got a, a hooked lip or very narrow mouth, and the white rhino or vate rhinoster has got a very wide mouth. Now, in terms of pink rhinos, I suppose if you found an albino rhino, its skin would be pink. And so it would be possible, but it would be very unpleasant to be a pink rhinoceros, I'm afraid, because out in this hot sun, it would burn almost immediately. And so although it's possible, we'd really not like to see it. This chap seems to be deeply confused about what to do with his existence. I wonder if he knows what a celebrity he is. We're going to turn around and head down, I think, towards the Hammerkorps nest and beyond. While we do that, let us go across to Tristan, who I believe is driving about the place happily on his Saturday afternoon. Now, here we are with another black rhino. And, uh, well, I thought to myself, wow, that we are very lucky here. And Archie, basically, who doesn't like to say too much while we're driving, or at all really, said to me basically that I was talking nonsense and he has seen six black rhino together and so the fact that I said that they don't spend as much time with each other as their white cousins is utter rubbish. So I apologise for that profusely and Archie said that it seemed to be a sort of mixture of cows and calves and bulls and so I suspect exactly like the white rhino you'll find that cows that have got non-independent youngsters will come together from time to time and sometimes, uh, in fact, youngsters that have left their mothers will join with mature cows just to be around them and sort of take their guidance, if you like. Enrico, are you wondering if there are any other rhino species in the Mara? There aren't any. Are there any others in Africa? Yes, there is another species called the white rhinoceros, of which we've been speaking, and they are found largely in southern Africa. I think there is one northern white rhino left, and that one northern white rhino is left in the Sudan, and they're not really sure actually if it's still alive. And so the northern white rhino, which is a different subspecies of the white rhino, could easily be extinct. I mean, it's functionally extinct. But the white rhino down in southern Africa, he's doing okay. The last sort of eight or ten years have been pretty bad from a poaching point of view for the white rhino, but they seem to be getting it under control in southern Africa and in fact the white rhino was I think it was more threatened than the black rhino in the 60s when Ian Player the maverick and brilliant conservationist got into conserving them down in Natal uh, in Tlhue and Folozi down in Natal Oh, Safari Dream, you're wondering what the difference between extinct and endangered is. Well, that animal over there is endangered because there are so few of them left. There are probably only about two and a half thousand. Uh, well, between two and a half and five thousand black rhinos left in the world. Extinct means none left at all. And so that's the difference there. And you go from endangered to critically endangered to extinct in the wild and then to completely extinct. Let's have one last look at him and then we'll head on. The pangolin, of course, is an endangered species as well. And it is World Pangolin Day. And much like, in fact, very similar to the rhino, their 
scales are used in various kinds of medicine, and their scales are made of the same thing that a rhino horn's horn is made of, that a rhino horn's horn, that a rhino's horn is made of, and that's keratin, which is the stuff your hair and your nails are made of. It has no known medicinal property whatsoever, but that is to say that, I mean, the human being is not a very clever thing, is it? And one of the reasons that Africa has been subjected to the great ravages of poaching and the great demand for things like pangolin scales and rhino horn is that Asian species of these animals have been hunted into almost extinction. The Javan, Sumatran rhinos and Indian rhinos are even more endangered as far as I'm aware than the black rhino. Certainly the Javan and Sumatran versions. Okay, we're going to move on from here. Tristan is now sitting with a great herd of pachyderms of a different kind.